Matthew, there's nothing in the laws of physics to prevent nanobots, uh, microscopic robots, from circulating in the bloodstream and bulking us up, uh, strengthening our bones, giving us the power of Superman. There's nothing in the laws of physics to prevent that. However, the reality is much, much more complicated. Let's take a look at nanotechnology today. It's very primitive. It is a multi-billion dollar industry only because we use it for coatings, coatings to make fabrics stronger and coatings for different kinds of appliances. We also use it in airbags. Uh, believe it or not, there's a tiny sensor, an accelerometer, in your airbag, the complements of nanotechnology, that create the gigantic explosion of an airbag. But that's today. The promise is that in the coming decades, with carbon nanotubes, with graphene, will create even new substances which can replace the silicon of computers, maybe even give us a space elevator. Graphene, for example, is a substance made out of one molecule thick layer of carbon. Think about that. Think of like saran wrap made out of one molecule thick carbon atoms. That graphene is so strong in principle, you can take an elephant, put the elephant on a pencil, suspend the pencil on graphene, and graphene will not break. That's how strong it is. It is the strongest material known to science at the present time. However, having these nanobots in our body, that is decades away, we can't even create a nanobot that is large that'll do most of these things on a microscopic scale. Forget going down to the atomic scale. So to summarize, yes, in principle, there's nothing in the laws of physics to prevent nanobots from invigorating us, changing our molecular structure, changing our bone structure and skeleton. However, the practical implementation of that is staggering. It's not going to happen for many decades to come.